go get it. I've got a really good project for you today. And this project's a really simple project. A friend of mine just started a leather business and he's, he's really, really good at it actually. And one of the problems that he has is some of his startup costs are, well, let's say astron astronomical. Say like a sheet of leather, he says, is six, $700 for like the, the good quality work that he's doing. And what he needs is, he needs a tool that's gonna paint the edge of the leather, like say on a belt or a harness or a strap. And we're gonna make that tool for him today. And it's gonna be pretty fun. Let's take a look here. It's gonna be a pretty basic part. The smaller diameter shaft's gonna be a half inch. Then I'm gonna have a little groove on the side there on each side that's gonna shed the paint. And it's all gonna be made out of a two inch round bar stock. Luckily, I've got a little bit of bar stock hiding in the back here. And we're gonna use something this because we're going cost effective today. Okay, so I guess I don't have to tell you what happened here. Um, <laughs> uh, the uh, bandsaw is not working and the hacksaw needs to be hooked up in the side shop there. That's actually gonna be a project. I think later this month, we're gonna get that all hooked up. And hopefully when it's done, it's gonna look a little bit more like the face converter that I got in this shop here. I mean, this one works pretty good. I probably don't need to go as complicated with the splitter box, but this is pretty much what I need. So one of the problems that I'm running into here is the face of the parting tool is actually <laughs> actually gonna bang into here. So we're just gonna pull it out and we're just gonna step away at it, kind of chip away at it until the face can actually clear it. And a little side note as well, if you look at the tip of the parting tool, you see that it's like kind of a shiny silver. Yeah, I sharpened this on a green stone prior to doing this and you can get away with sharpening some of your, your parting tools. This is a cheaper parting tool bit, but it's, it's working and I'm pretty happy with it. part it off, although as rough as it was. We're gonna chip away at this outside diameter now. And then once we have the outside diameter done, we're gonna cut the sides and then we can kind of get those outside dimensions cut to where we need them. Now the fun thing I really enjoy about building parts like this is there's never really any specific exact dimensional size. And that's probably what makes it the most fun about this. So peeling the hot rolled material off the outside was, was kind of Kind of actually fun, you just kind of bury it in there and then as long as you're getting a good surface finish and a good feed and speed, and then it's just go time from there. And the surface finish on this metal turned out really, really well. I'm pretty sure this is like a 1085 steel of some sort. This is some kind of salvage material from the railway. And in my experience, the railway usually doesn't, uh, doesn't skimp when it comes to mechanical parts. Now let's zero that on the DRO and then we can come back to that size later when we gotta cut the ends. Also, take note on the chips that are coming off of there. They're not sixes and C's like they're supposed to be ideally, but at least they're not coming off there like ribbons. Now, remember a lot of these dimensions aren't exactly super critical, so everything's gonna be built around it. So I'm not gonna get too, too stressed about getting the wrong size or what have you. You know, for example, I had to cut off a bit of that outside material there on the, uh, the hot rolled steel. And we're down to, I think it's, what do we got here? one inch and 980 thou. It's not a big deal, we're 20 thou under, but if there was a bearing fit or something else, then we'd be really worried about it. But I am gonna make sure these dimensions on the outside are at least close. And also in the notes down below, I'm gonna have a link to the blueprint drawing and uh, make sure that you can actually get a hold of that in case you wanna build one of these as well. So coming up on the face, there's two ways you can probably cut that. There's one way you can cut from left to right, or you can do a facing, kind of like pushing into it like a parting tool would be. And I'm choosing to do this pretty much for one sole reason is, because that tool is starting to get a little bit dull, and I'm trying to get my maximum usage out of it. And generally on these tools, I only cut one way, right to left. And when you push it the opposite way, you're going to get a sharp tool bit up a little faster because they got my dimension down a little bit so we're probably going to bump it up to i don't know say thousand rpm so we'll run up to number three number a perfect and it looks like we're getting pretty close to our dimension here so i'm just going to take a skim cut come up to half inch gonna face that bad boy off there. Let's turn this off and give it a measure. It's 
676. So remember I zeroed that to four. So we're gonna go in 175 thou. Let's go in 100 thou and then we'll come back to 75. Come in to 175 thou. And it's even almost going a little bit slow here. So I'm gonna come up to this edge here where I've zeroed it on the face. And I'm gonna cut this 75 thou off. And then since this is the final pass, I'm actually gonna transition into this other phase and make sure I clean up that five thou extra I left there. Another thing that would give me a better service finish in total would probably be putting in a new cutter, but this is working quite well and I can touch it up with some sandpaper. Yeah, you see how that's kind of tearing there a bit? That should have been spun up a little bit faster. Probably 1500, I'm guessing. I'm pretty sure our size is gonna suffer a little bit because of that. Got about seven thou to clean up on that. Let's change those feeds and speeds a little bit and see if we can get a better service finish. Spin her up to 1700. Now that just kind of skied over the top of it. Now, because that tool bit's dull, it's starting to ski a little bit across the top of the work. And rather than change the tool bit out, I'm going to use the age-old technique of, yeah, you guessed it, sanding on the lathe. Now, also, if you're going to try sanding on the lathe, you notice how I have my sleeves rolled up in just about every single video you've watched? That's for a simple reason. That's so you don't get caught in the lathe. Also, if you're using emery cloth in the lathe, you want to be super careful. It doesn't catch and suck you into it. Now here's one that I really like actually. Hilltop Machine Shop, uh, I saw him doing this one and this is this is pretty thrifty, man. Like, just to get your side gauge off of here. Basically once you kind of feel it hitting. I mean, of course you're gonna wear a little bit of your ruler, but that's uh, okay. That's, that's gonna give me the exact edge that I'm looking for there. Let's knock this down to 600. Now we're just gonna go in one inch. Now look at that, you can actually see on the side there it kind of cut and so precise to it that it's got a tiny little lip. And it's that lip that's kind of just folding over and getting pushed off to the side. It's, it's actually cutting on the money there. I'm actually changing the blueprints here <laughs> yet again once more, but don't worry, I'll have a picture for you in the end and, and actually have the finished blueprints. But the reason why I'm changing this is, is because the level of the paint in the tray, I can easily tell that that, that little wheel in there that's gonna shed it, it probably would have been dipping into it and it wouldn't be working as good as I would have liked. Now, let's move this over to the other side and start cutting the other pin and wheel. Double check. I believe we are correct. So now that I've got it all mapped out, on my digital readout, I know exactly how far I have to go down to hit that pin, and I also know how far I have to go down to get that little wheel that's gonna shed the paint. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that half inch wheel, and I'm actually just gonna do stepping as I go down, just shedding material off, working from the unsteady part to the more stable part. Before I cut this all the way down to this half inch size, I'm gonna to wanna to cut this step so I got that meat on the side there so I don't get too much chatter. So let's do that right now. I'm just gonna go over, it's gonna go over, what is it, an inch and a half? And then I'm gonna minus from inch and a half, 110 thou, so that'll give me 390. And that, 110 thou, is the thickness of that tool bit. And then we're gonna go into,
three quarters of an inch. Ah, no, it wasn't three quarters of an inch, was it? It was 725. Oh no, now I got that ring to deal with. Let's fix that ring before it is a problem. It's a little toasty. I'm gonna grab some side cutters and we'll cut that off. I mean, I don't necessarily need to cut this off, but I think a lot of us know where this ends. I'm just going to check the size now while we're here and make sure it's pretty close to what we're looking for. And my very nearest say, I've got 80 thou to cut off in there. It's 75 actually. Let's jump in here. We're just going to take really, really light cuts. that parting tool is not going to like this. But if we're careful, it's going to let us get away with it. Okay, now that we've got that diameter down to size, let's part this off. Hopefully we can get on to something a little bit more fun than just cutting with a part tool. Before I throw the part in there, I'm going to want to make sure everything's clean in the chuck so I don't have it out around. That is hot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to throw this in here and we're going to cut that paint groove on the inside. On that inside paint groove, see the idea with the paint groove is to kind of feed the paint back into where it's supposed to go and kind of drip down the side of the, the part. But we got to cut a groove in there and it's super non-critical. So we're just going to do this by eye here. Just give it a spin. We're going to get a piece of high speed steel and jam it in there and, and cut that V groove. Okay, well, I guess I have to correct myself. We're not using high speed steel. We're going to use braised carbide. And more specifically, this is actually a threading tool that I've used for other jobs and it's still sharp, so we're gonna use this for it. It's gonna work quite well. The only problem with the 60 degrees is gonna be, later on he's gonna to have to make sure absolutely it's clean in there, or he's gonna have a bit of stuff trapped in there. Okay, I'm gonna show a bit of a bad habit here, and full disclaimer, this is why I buy cheap dial indicators, because hammering on a dial indicator while it's still touching the work is never a good idea. If you have a minute Toyo or a Starrett, I would probably lift that little plunger off of there before you start tapping on it. But in the basis of all this, this is going to show you the good technique. I'm basically going to raise it up to where it's the highest, move it a little bit more so that I'm actually hitting it where it's high, and just lightly tapping it, you can get it pretty darn close. One of the problems that I did have with this that I didn't show in the video was actually I clamped a little bit too tight on that chuck, and I got a bit of chuck marks on the other side of the wheel. They did pull a show, but if you're making a part and you want to have it exactly perfect, 
probably some steps that you could have taken to do this without getting the chuck marks on it. Now, the reason for center drilling it right now, I should have done this before when I was originally machining it, but sometimes you just gotta catch mistakes as you go. Now, what we're gonna do is the knurling part, the most fun part of the whole job. And it turns out to be relatively easy with a straight knurl. So now we're gonna come up in the dreaded setting the height for the uh, the knurling tool. And I've never tried this before. I've tried it on the, the two wheel knurling tool and it works pretty good. So we're gonna try using the ruler method on, on the single point and see how it goes. Get that good and tight. Get rid of some of these wrenches here. I think we're ready to go here. Got to tighten up. Now we're going to pick a speed. Oh boy, what speed should we pick here? I'm just kind of shooting from the hip. I'm going to go with 275. Spin. You can see right out of the gate that it's only touching on one side. So let's back that off. Let's move that over and we'll try that again. I think I'm even gonna slow this down here a little bit too, which is 175. All right. Let's just go for it. giving me a bit of a double knurl on there but really remember the purpose of this here is just actually traction so let's go a little bit harder in there That's looking better. Boy, that's looking a lot better. Let's go back and forth a couple more times here. Oh, it's cutting in really good now. Let's get some paper towel here and give her a wipe so you can see at home. Now look at that. That's just amazing. Now I was double knurling at first there, but right after it started picking it up, no problem. I'm just gonna go one more pass back and forth here just to see what we can get, get away with. I'm starting to see chips in there, so that's getting a little bit too much. See these chips that are starting to form here? Let's move this out of the way here so you can see. See there's some chips here that are starting to form. Now that's not ideal. So that what that means is I'm going too far and I'm actually starting to cut into the metal. And uh, so it's definitely time to stop right now. Man, would you look at this? What a thing of beauty. This is perfect. This is exactly what he was looking for. The only little drawback is I've got to go back in here and touch up a couple of these little tiny burrs that are stuck in there. But this is, regardless of that, this is absolutely beautiful. And now I'm going to make the second video of the uh, tray that we're going to make for this. It's actually got a, going to go on a PVC tray that's going to roll on. But this is, this is, this is beautiful.